time to hop in a stagecoach and venture to the town of Brookfield. New town, new characters, and new heartwarming stories. Ready, rolling, and action. Welcome to the When Hope Calls preview special. I'm Kevin McGarry, or Nathan Grant on When Calls the Heart, and I'll be your personal Mountie guide to our first original streaming series premiering August 30th, exclusively on Hallmark Movies Now. Over the next half hour, we'll meet the cast, explore the set, and learn how the storylines of When Calls the Heart and When Hope Calls will connect. And you might even see a familiar face or two. You'll love how everyone's favorite world is growing. Let's go check it out. When Hope Calls takes place in a town called Brookfield, and it follows two sisters who run an orphanage. The new series is a spin-off of When Calls the Heart, so you're gonna see a lot of casts coming through Brookfield from time to time. After six amazing seasons, the characters from When Calls the Heart are like family, and I know you'll feel the exact same way about the cast of When Hope Calls. Hey guys, look over there. That's Jocelyn Hudon, who plays Grace Bennett on the show. I like Grace because she's like me. She's very happy, she's optimistic, she's positive. Kind of quirky and a little clumsy. It's fun to play her. It's Morgan Cohen. She plays Lillian Walsh. It's really exciting to be on this brand new series. When Hope Calls is about family and love. Grace and Lillian are two sisters, and they were orphaned when they were young girls. Lillian got adopted into a new family, so they were then separated for the remainder of their upbringing. Eventually, Lillian goes out and finds Grace, and they get to start their relationship again. That's a pretty fabric. <laughs> I'll make a beautiful dress. I wish I could sell like you. I'll teach you. Be nice. <laughs> it's really interesting because we've just found each other so recently. Not only is the audience learning about Lillian and Grace, but they're also learning about each other and what they missed in each other's lives. This is my old house, but I want to make sure it's starting to feel like yours too. I love it here. And it's the perfect place for our orphanage. It is. They want to start their own orphanage to give these children love and support. I grew up in orphanages where you felt like you had to keep secrets because mistakes went unforgiven. This is not that place. It will be similar to what they're used to and what they love and why they watch One Calls the Heart, but I think we've made it a little bit our own. I know you did four episodes yeah. on When Calls the Heart. How does it feel to kind of come on this new set? It's awesome. It's similar, but very different at the same time. The same values that When Calls the Heart has, uh, with some new twists, some new uh, characters, obviously. It's Chuck, right? Most definitely is. So do you just look like a cowboy, or are you the real thing? It's kind of a Romeo and Juliet situation with her and Chuck. I think the Hardys are going to love that. It's just a continuation of the When Calls the Heart family. We're just adding on to their world. So what do you think the audience will love uh, about this new series on Hallmark? I mean, brand new characters, so lots of different storylines going on. And we do have some romance. I heard there's a bit of romance. Yeah. You need help. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, it wasn't a question. You need help. Because your bag is, is leaking. <laughs> Apollo thanks you. Apollo? It's my horse. You named your horse after a Greek god? I figured he could use the inspiration, but turns out I just gave him a big head. I think he thinks he's better than me. You sure I can give you a hint? Thank you. My wagon is right over there. There may be some love interest in there. I mean, a handsome man in uniform walking about town can't help but like be like, hmm, who's that? But I have children to mind, so priorities. One of the perfect scenes to really show who Lillian is is the night of fire when everyone comes out of the hotel to see what's happening. 
Her first instinct is to make sure that all the children are taken care of. Take every child in town to the orphanage. Well, what about you? I'll stay here and help. Go, 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 okay, let's go. It is never about her first. I mean, she's responsible for an orphanage and she's like a problem solver and she is hands-on and she is independent and she is very strong. I think the entire community is going to love the fact that there are crossovers. One Calls at Heart already has such an incredible fan base. They'll get to learn about all these new characters, but they'll also get people that they already know and they love and see them in a different light in a different town. You can't help but feel so lucky to be a part of it. Another Mountie right here. Hey, we're old friends from yeah, Mountie Academy. My name's RJ Hathanaka, and I play Mountie Gabriel Kinslow. We found our man. Playing a Mountie. It's a very unique experience. My grandfather got very excited when I told him I was gonna be playing a Mountie because he's always like had such reverence for the uniform. Gabriel Kinslow is coming back home after an absence. Welcome back, Gabe. It's good to be here. And uh, there's a lot of intrigue. Can you tell me exactly what you saw when you were outside the hotel? We were playing catch on the boardwalk and we saw smoke across the street, so we ran in. And you were always on the boardwalk? Uh, yes, sir. He's an inquisitive mind. Once the problem presents itself, he's in it to solve it. Water, water, water! Water, water, water! He really is there for the good of the town. So Hope Valley. Yeah. Yeah, is, is, uh, is, I mean, it's an incredibly well-established uh, town. It's been there for a while. How does our town compare? Well, I mean, the town is pretty good. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, it, it's pretty nice. Do you have, an, you have an office, right? It's like, I mean, office is a strong word, but you wanna go over and see it? Let's go and see the office. It's spacious. It's uh, pretty good, right? What is that, oak? It's Here's a, a trick question. When does Hope call? Hope calls on uh, August 30th. That's when we start airing. That's a really good answer. Okay, one more right away, guys. Hey, guys. Guys, look. <laughs> He's looking for his hat. That's Greg Hovenessian, who plays Chuck Stewart on the show. He's madly looking for his hat. Who stole my cowboy hat? Chuck Stewart is the town veterinarian and handles a ranch. Obviously, something's wrong. I need to find out what. I mean, being a farm boy makes you an expert at that? No, but being a veterinarian does. Did you have to go to school for that? I did. I want to see my diploma. The relationship between Grace and Chuck is two really headstrong characters who have an opinion. Thanks for coming out here. There's a potential budding romance. But Chuck's a man who knows what he wants. When he, when he has his eye on something, he goes after it. <laughs> He's the son of Tess Stewart, who is kind of a power figure. His mother created a lot of bad blood and, and history, especially with the sisters. Where are you headed? To Ken Newsom's to buy a dairy cow. Oh, I see. The Newsom Ranch have better dairy cows than the Stewart Ranch? Just different. Different how? Different, as in they're not owned by Tess Stewart. Well, see there, now that's kind of mean. Well, from what I hear, your mom has been kind of mean to Lillian and her family for years. It's complicated. It is like that forbidden love. You know, when, when the heart wants something that the mind doesn't allow. Is he different from who you are? Yeah, he's they're totally different. You know, Chuck's got a little bit of a, an accent, a little bit of a, a lean. You don't lean. Yeah, no, yeah, he's, he's a heavier, heavier this character. Is Greg, I do, I do this lean, is though. I do lean. I'm a leaner. Yeah. Coming up, it takes a village to make a village. We'll go on a tour of Brookfield and see how the production team turned back the clock to the early 1900s. In When Hope Calls, the town of Brookfield is a character unto itself. Walking down these streets, you're really transported back to the 1900s. It's pretty amazing just how realistic the set is. And that's the job of the production designer. Peter, how are you doing? Hey, good, how are you? Great. Good. I'm here with Peter Emink. He is the production designer of uh, When Hope Calls. The first question is, what does a production designer do? We're responsible for the design of the sets, 
did a lot of research into architecture back then. You've done a great job. I mean, we're sitting right here in the hotel that you built. Can you tell us about some of the other buildings that are in the Absolutely. Brookfield? We have the orphanage, the biggest set done. we have. It's about 2,503,000 square feet. We have the ranch house, and then we have all of these sets on the main street. We have the post office, the Gold Assay office, which is now our new infirmary, our laundromat, schoolhouse, our savings and loan. Your old savings and loan building. <laughs> Very Nobody good. thinks like my that. Jimmy Stewart's great. I, I thought it was pretty good. How does it feel to just kind of stand on the top of that hill over there and just think this was all in your imagination at one point? <laughs> great feeling. Yeah. You build it, they will come. And they have. And they have. We're here. <laughs> I've got an amazing team that I couldn't have done this without. That's a good prop. We try and use period elements wherever we can. I'm here with the prop master, Michael Jenneru. We get all the period props. It's like a big treasure hunt. Antique markets, estate sales, sometimes we have to build them. This candy here, is it edible? Um, compelled to say no. Okay. I'll try it later and we'll see. Crunchiness of it. Do you want one? No thanks, they're from 1890. Oh. Great. You know, as an actor, nothing makes you feel in character quite like the perfectly planned wardrobe. From the red serge to the corsets, dresses, and period correct suits, it's the responsibility of the costume designer to set our characters in the right time period. I'm inside the, uh, the wardrobe truck right now. I'm here with Kate Adams. She is the wardrobe truck supervisor. Making sure that you're in the right costume for the right scene. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Our leads have a look for each day. Every day is here, every character is here. How much research goes into like the designing of these things? A lot. Some of it is interpretation. I mean, we are in television. Right. And so you right. want to give it that nice little flair that's going to just take yeah, it up a notch. Right. <laughs> the wardrobe has been really interesting because they've really tried to be as close to the time as possible. My name's Hanneke Talbot, and I'll be playing Maggie Parsons, who is the new nurse coming to town. She's very sort of headstrong, maybe 100 years ahead of her time. She's just like, here I am. Well, where would your doctor be then? I can see how the town would sort of think, who's this English girl that's just popped over and is, you know, running things now? It's actually so lovely to have a film set in nature because obviously they can be super busy environments, but then you just turn around and you're, and you're here, which is so gorgeous. Having horses on the show is just such a lovely gift because they're obviously such gorgeous animals. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Oh. Having watched When Calls the Heart, those characters become real for you as an audience as a spin-off of the show. It's so cool to be part of the family now. I say, you know, follow us along on the journey and, and see, see where it takes us. Hi, how are you doing? Welcome to Brookfield, folks. I'm Tess Stewart, and I run this town. Mrs. Stewart? What? She's a wealthy landowner. She has a tremendous herd of cattle. She's got horses. She is feared, most definitely. She has no time for silliness. I'll take this one. I have more in the pasture. Oh, this will do fine. I can give you $8.85. I sell dairy cows for $12. You know, she's a little tougher than the rest of them. I think that Tess has complicated relationships in town. She especially has a great deal of conflict with the young girls that are running the orphanage. $8.85 is my final offer. Sorry, no deal. What I love about the series, well, I love the idea of a group of people in a town that come together despite all their differences to help each other. I love this message of hope. So, of course, we'd all like to think that we're camera ready the minute we wake up, fresh as a daisy. But the reality is that we actually rely heavily on our hair and makeup team to get us looking like the characters that you know and love. 
So let's go meet him. Meet Ashley Lamon. This Hi, is our fantastic makeup. And Hi. Amy Lamon, she's our hair. They transform us into the characters that you all know. Okay. Many people don't know this, but I actually take four hours every yeah. morning in the makeup it's chair. Challenging. So for makeup and the period, then how does that differ? It's definitely lighter, softer look. So something that's very natural, brings out the beauty within them. But with the hair, we're trying to stay within the period, but we're also playing a lot of the hair down. Yeah, exactly. That's it, huh? That's it. Wait. Nathan. There you are. I found you. All right, I'm ready. Let's go to set. When we come back, I'll show you some more movie magic from the incredible artists and teams that make When Hope Calls possible. The cast and crew of a series like When Hope Calls is like a small army where everyone has a specific job to do. So the generals would be the producers, directors, and directors of photography who are responsible for the entire look of the show. There's a lot of similarities with uh, Hope Valley and Brookfield. Um, I mean, we have uh, the telephone. You guys don't have the telephone We're yet. Not there yet. Uh, but we have cars. Well, we have an original 1910 Model T. It's the only 1910 Model T left in existence that was built in Canada. Yeah. Can we maybe go for a ride in it? Who wants to race? Let's see what this bad boy can do. Look at this. What do you get, about 20 bucks to the gallon on this sucker? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm with the director, Don McBrarty, of, uh, of this block of When Hope Calls. Carrying on and action. Can you tell us what goes into directing an episode of When Hope Calls? Uh, for me, it always starts with the script. And you come forward, you could be talking on the way. In this case, we had a great story where the orphanage is under threat of being closed. We're doing two episodes at the same time. It's much more efficient. And you have to be able to jump from one story to the other, and, and so do the actors. I got to meet a wonderful group of actors. Right. Uh, well, you just have to say that to yeah. my camera right now, but thank you. What's your approach to kind of doing a period piece? Does it differ from uh, when you kind of do more modern stuff? A little stuff? bit, because people behave differently. And it's fun to just think about those details. Hey guys, I'm with our director of photography, Russell Guzzi. He's already got me at work here. The sun is a little bright, so I'm... Just a little higher. A little higher? Good, right about Perfect. here? Okay, okay my arms are tired. Can I just pass it off to you? Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Russ, tell us what a, what a DP does. I put where all the cameras are gonna go. I see where I can put the lights, try to get some movement. Have you ever worked in a place like this? Not really, no, but it was... It was been, it's been great shooting in here. Yeah. Other than being in a studio with cement floor. That's, it beats being in a yeah, some you're out in the wilderness, dark, really. dang studio, yeah. yeah. I know it's gonna be an amazing show. Just amazing actors in the scripts are part. Like, I find myself tearing up sometimes, yeah. laughing a lot, and I just think it's got a good feel. Action. Gentlemen, I'm sure you two could use a break. We've got refreshments here. I was blown away when I walked onto the set of, of Brookfield and When Hope Calls. It's beautiful. I play Rosemary Coulter on When Calls the Heart, but Rosemary and her husband Lee are making a surprise visit to Brookfield. There was a fire in Brookfield and Rosemary, in typical Rosemary fashion, was just like, not only are we gonna send lumber from your mill, Lee, we're going to deliver it. It's so nice to finally see Brookfield. It certainly has its charm. Yeah. Pardon me. Chuck Stewart. Oh, Rosemary Coulter. I just heard about the lumber. The fact that you came out all this way to help us, it means a lot. Well, this town holds two of my very favorite people. And they have certainly brought some new life to this old town. It's really exciting. It's becoming a bigger idea than just one show. And I think that they're taking the torch. They really care about this story and they care about these characters and they care about the world that was already created on When Calls the Heart and they want to stay true to that and true to the fans. And I'm really excited for them. They have a great adventure ahead of them. 
You're doing a wonderful job here. You really think so? You're an inspiration. And they're just scratching the surface at this point. I think our fans really connect to the idea of it being a community and a family and how that community and family come together and support one another. And I think that that's what has tried to carry forth into When Hope Calls, that same idea of community. I'm so glad you joined us for the When Hope Calls preview special. To be working on this show with these producers and these directors and uh, these actors is a real honor. I'm really excited for the audience to meet them. I'm really excited to be a part of a new streaming platform with completely new content of a new series that has an incredible reputation and it's cool to be part of that. I'm very excited to be the first TV show on Hallmark Movies now. It's very exciting for us and viewers can watch it anytime and anywhere. I mean, we have pretty high hopes that everyone's going to be really excited to watch it and join in with us. It is so great that the When Calls the Heart family is growing. I'm really excited to see how these worlds and storylines will overlap, and I hope you are too. Thank you for watching our When Hope Calls preview special. The first two episodes are available to stream on August 30th. After that, we'll be dropping new episodes every Friday through October 25th, only on Hallmark Movies Now. Just go to hmnow.com and subscribe. I'm Kevin McGarry, and I'll see you in Hope Valley and Brookfield very soon.